Python is an object-oriented programming language. Object-oriented programming allows you to model your code after real-world objects. It's a very natural way to program. An object has data associated to it. These are called attributes. And this data describes the object. And there's also actions, also called methods, that the object can perform. For example, think about a car as an object. A car has data such as the color, number of doors, the odometer reading, the license plate number, the VIN number. And it also has actions that, that it could do. A car can accelerate, decelerate, turn left or right, turn on the windshield wipers, turn the lights on or off. And so therefore a car is an object which has attributes or data and actions or methods. And a class keyword is what defines the related attributes and methods of an object. Calling a class creates an instance or a new object. So once you create this class, you can think of it as a blueprint for creating objects. Another example is you can think about a recipe for baking cookies. If you wanted to bake a thousand cookies, all you need is one recipe and you can make as many cookie objects as you want. So that's the same thing that a class does. It allows you to create as many objects or instances of the class that you need. So let's take a look at an example of classes and objects in Python. In the Python code shown here, we have a class declared called person. And the way to declare a class is just you say the word class followed by a space and then the name of the class, usually in uppercase letters, and a colon. And then this thing right here, where it says def double underscore init, this is called a constructor. And we'll learn more about that in a, in a future video. But what this basically does is it helps construct the person object at the time you create it. It'll set name to a default value of NA if you don't specify a name, age to zero, and weight to 0, 0.0. And these things right here, name, age, and weight, these are the attributes or the data associated with all person objects. And this is an instance method. We'll learn more about that in a future video also. And what this is going to do is it's going to just simply print out the values of name, age, and weight to the screen. Over here we have our main method and what we're doing in line 14 is creating that person object. You just call it whatever you want like person1 and set that to that class you created with the parentheses. This is the class object and this is the instance object of that class. And once we created that person class, we can say person1.name and set that name to whatever we want. It's Kanye West, person1.age, 44, and person1.weight, say he's 204.5 pound, pounds. Okay, and then to print out the data for that person object, we just say person one dot print person. We call this instance method, and that should print out all the data for Kanye West. There it is. And similarly, we can create as many of these person objects as we want by just saying person two equals person, and we can say person two dot name is Kim Kardashian. Two dot age. Let's just say she's forty-five. I have no idea how old she is. And person two dot weight. She's like a buck seventy. I don't know. Point three. And let's print out her data. Person two dot print person. And this will print out the data for just Kim Kardashian because person two is a separate person object from person one. So if I run that code, it'll print out Kanye West's information first and then Kim Kardashian's information next. And I can, if I was to comment out the data for Kanye West, only Kim Kardashian's data will print out because person two is the object that's calling the print person instance method. So it's only going to get you the data that belongs to person two and not to person one. So that is an example of a class called person. And it has, what's important to understand is that it has data or attributes and it can have 
methods or actions that that person can do. And this is just printing out the data, but a person can also have more useful actions like eat or sleep or study Python programming or whatever it is that you can think of that you want your person to be able to do. So stay tuned for the next videos where we learn a lot more about classes and objects in Python.